So good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And well, I'm Fernanda. I'm currently leading the Open Knowledge chapter in Brazil. And I'm going to present this, our dearest project, which is Querido Diário, which literally means dear diary, but it's a wordplay that maybe doesn't make much sense in English, because in Portuguese we say uh, diaries for official gazettes and official records, and also the personal journals we have, or my dear diary, so it's, it's this, idea and I'm going to try to answer these questions, all these topics, why we did it, what we did, how we made it, and who is using and what for, the impact, and what's next. So let's see if I can do it in, on time. <laughs> so this is basically why we did it. This image summarizes why, why we did it because, you know, this is an image of the official Gazette from almost two centuries ago, and this is the yesterday's Gazette. So it's basically the same thing, but now they are on the internet. But of course, uh, definitely you wouldn't uh, read it while you're having breakfast. So it's not something easy to get. And this problem in Brazil, uh, Becomes, becomes a huge problem if you think that because of our federative system, we have 5,500 and something autonomous cities that can deliver all sorts of public services. They, they must deliver public serv services and they don't have uh, any standards for doing so. so there's no standard for uh, records publication. And in a situation like that, you can imagine that PDF brings lonely and sadly. And also we have, uh, we used to say that we have data de deserts because in these cities, they don't have transparency portals. The vast majority of cities don't have. We have in the capitals, the, the larger one, uh, but even the ones that have transparency portals, they don't publish everything. They publish the mandatory things such as uh, contracts, and the rest is uh, forgotten in the, the, the gazettes. Things like public purchases, contracts, appointments, dismissals of servants, uh, local legislation, public policy, and so on. So this is Querido Diário. This is uh, just a glimpse of what it is. You can, uh, in a more friendly format, search for keywords, for cities, and for periods of time. But it's, it's important to say that uh, this is not only a platform, it's also uh, an open infrastructure. It's more than a platform. So I'll, I'll just have give you an idea, an overview of this structure, of this infrastructure. Well, you have the official gazettes, uh, the websites, which we have to discover where they are because uh, we make a collaborative census to, to discover what they are. And then we have, we build custom scrapers. They have to be specific because each city publishes in a, a different way. And we collect uh, the file of the, the official gazette. We, we, uh, we keep that file. And we also uh, get metadata for uh, additional number, um, dates, and so on. We, keep everything in our database, uh, indexing. Uh, currently, we are, we are using Elasticsearch, but we're thinking about that. <laughs> and, and we process, process all these uh, files, PDF files, in, is extracting pure text and making it available in an API. Uh, this API is already serving some platforms, including the one I show, showed you. 
and of course the, the final user with journalists, researchers, and public managers, and so on. So they, it has four components. I already mentioned this data engineering part where with the scrapers and processing, we have an open data uh, component because of the public API and forms of download we are implementing. Uh, we have the search console in the web platform, but I didn't mention the intelligence part because we, we are trying to gather other public data sets and to make sense of this data as well. So we are exploring some artificial intelligence like natural language processing for uh, contextualizing, categorizing, and enriching data. For instance, with uh, other data sets such as the companies, the company registry in Brazil and all the company owners, so when you, you got a code of a company in uh, uh, publication of a gazette, uh, it would inform all information we have about this company and the owners and so on. So all this is possible. Uh, this crazy idea of gathering local records because we have a participation strategy and a collaboration going on. So first of all, it's an open source and it's available on GitHub. And we have more than uh, 80 contributors in just one of the repositories. Uh, we have a community in Discord with almost 600 people. We, ha we do trainings with our school of data. For instance, we created a, a Python for civic innovation to teach people how to make scrapers. So they can do scrapers for their own cities and help us to implement in our interface, in our um, structure as well. And we do lots of participation in conferences such as Python, uh, the Python ecosystem uh, in our own conference of data journalism called uh, BR. We have a, a network of civic ambassadors, uh, more than 150 people in this network. We have a program for cooperating with universities, this cooperation program. Uh, for now, we have agreement with three higher education centers and the students and professors uh, are exploring technical issues we have. For instance, how do we segment several cities inside a PDF and how can we uh, put this in an easier format? for people to consume. So they are working on that, and a, a Northeast uh, institution just solved our problem of segmentation with students from uh, undergraduate students, so it was so, so, so nice. Um, and we also do open calls for local journalists, so we pay a small amount for them, a small grant, a micro grant, for them to cover stories based on the content they find in this platform. Or if they are more advanced, they can use the API. For instance, we have this uh, journalism, independent journalism collective in Rio de Janeiro, in, in Favela da Maré, uh, which built, they are a data-driven lab. They were formed by School of Data, by the way, five years ago. And they did a report on basic sanitation uh, in the community using the, the, the things they learned in the, the diary, the dear diary. <laughs> this is a more recent uh, page. It's available now in the Querido Diario context. It's exclusively for monitoring words with uh, technology for education, how cities are implementing technology. And for instance, I, I just put Google to see what is happening in the last month. It's not showing here, but I've selected the last month. And it showed that a city is uh, acquiring in an emergency uh, bid uh, Google licenses 
for education with no uh, no transparency and no um, no comp uh, com competences, no, yeah, there's not doing this uh, by the book. <laughs> Just an example, and here we have alerts. People can receive email alerts of keywords they want, and it's already being used for public managers to see what other cities are doing, but also uh, people like uh, institutions that uh, for instance, Internet Lab in Brazil that researches uh, surveillance in schools are keeping an eye in what cities are doing with uh, facial recognition in schools. If you put facial recognition, it will show all the cities that are uh, doing something with that. And this is another layer because we do um, some processing to really identify what's linked to education, to technology, and it's a filter that uh, keeps it easier for people to, to monitor the subject. And we're doing the same thing with environmental. So this is the climate diary that do this processing for finding uh, content on uh, environment. So acts, public acts, uh, such infractions or our policies or legislation related to environment that uh, keeps easier for journalists to search. Because otherwise they would have to go to each municipal diary to try to find keywords on PDFs. So it's much easier that way. And this we did it, I forgot to say that the, the the previous one we did with educational organizations, and this one we are doing with uh, environmental organizations. So we are partnering with people that have knowledge in these fields, those fields. Uh, by now, we have six to seven cities available. It may not be much if you consider the whole, the, nu the number, the absolute number of cities, but if you consider that we have uh, 47 uh, million people living in those cities because we started with the larger ones, it's already something, uh, an impact. And it's uh, almost a quarter of Brazilian population. So, What's next? What we are trying to solve and to do next? We have to improve the architecture because it's uh, limiting us to, to escalate, which would be the next step. We are planning to have 250 cities by the end of the year. And we want to, to cover at least 1,600 but we have to do improvements in the architecture because it costs a lot. So we do crowdfunding, we have specific funding for doing these uh, thematic uh, layers of the infrastructure because no one cares about official records until you do something related to a subject. You know? So we are, this is our strategy to keep it uh, sustainable and growing. And also to research more the, the in NLP and other uh, artificial intelligence applications. And uh, our dream, our final goal would be would have um, would be construct to build an open source system for cities, open by default, because it makes no sense doing all this uh, scraping all the time. Uh, if cities would adhere, uh, it would be much better, but we, uh, we have no power over this, so we are starting to show the value of opening this information, and cities are starting to want to open by default. They are coming to us asking, how do we do to, to be in the platform? How can we have our uh, city so I can use the API? And we are starting this dialogue with them to, to show the value of having this information. So join us in GitHub if you want to, 
to have, uh, we are making an effort to have a bilingual uh, code so people of other contexts can contribute, but the main language is Portuguese. And just quick facts about the open knowledge in Brazil. We have these four lines of action. This project is inside the Data Science for Civic Innovation Program, but we also have the School of Data, Advocacy and Research. For instance, they do reports about education and technologies using the diary. We do uh, f trainings based on this content. And we have services and cooperation as well. We have 15 people in the team. These are the people. And uh, Julio is the technical leader of this program. And we have uh, community manager, Rebecca, and the intern, Juliana, which is super, super <laughs> engaged in the project. And this is the, the other people of Open Knowledge in Brazil. So thanks so much. Let's talk. Thank you so much. We've got time for a couple of questions. Does anyone have a question? Your hand went first. I'm going to run over here. Oh, Fernando, you know how much I love this project. Um, I wanted to know about the census data that you had in the scheme that you didn't really get into. How are you connected with the um, diary data? Yeah, the census is basically for discovering uh, the URL for the, the, the city and also to show the level of openness the city has. Then the, the platform shows the API have this at this point uh, of saying, uh, well, the city has already the, the we discovered the link or, or we know what it is, but it's still not in the platform or we know what it is and it's in the platform. So it gives it, it back. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation, amazing project. I was curious about the reception, if any, that this project has had on the government side of things, of the, on the agencies responsible for publishing these this, this records? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, it's mixed because some of them doesn't, don't understand and we are we're scraping responsibly, not making uh, a mess in the, the servers, but mostly they are, uh, they want to know more, they want to know how to open by default and we are starting to do cooperation with uh, cities associations so I, I haven't mentioned, but we have uh, a dialogue going on with two states that had several cities in the same system, proprietary system that uh, just publishes the PDF. And we are trying to make them understand that it would be much easier if we just get in the, in the source uh, the information there. So it's, it's starting, they are starting to understand the value and mostly control organizations internal control because they want to monitor and they are trying to see how they can use the API. And we know the federal government, I think August is not here, but the federal government I just discovered they are using this to keep track of what seats are doing. That's brilliant, thank you so much. What a wonderful talk, one more time.